Hi everyone. So who would win? Um, if I before I begin, if I seem a little listless and a little tired, in fact, I'm probably not even using the right word. I'm so tired. It's because I got about three hours of sleep last night due to a lot of stuff going around in the house. So yes, I am not altogether there right now, but I will do my best to be coherent and try to not fumble over my words as best as I can. But enough of that, Elk. We're talking about Boba Fett, the bounty hunter from Star Wars, the look at the main bounty hunter, the the greatest bounty hunter in the universe versus Vash the Stampede, bounty hunter in his own right, but more a uh, uh, desperado. Now I chose this matchup because I was trying to think of someone who would be a good fit for Boba Fett the fight, and it's kind of hard when you think about that. Samus they've done, and I agree with the whole Samus would probably kick Boba Fett's ass thing. I do agree with that. Just get, just give it how they explain things. But, that being said, I'm thinking, who else could work? And then I'm like, Vash is kind of a bounty hunter. I mean, that's how he makes his living and all that. So, yeah, let's go with Vash. So, as it always, this will be a scenario who's going to win the majority. And now I'm adding the other possibility of winning into there. So, starting with Boba Fett, he is the Mandalorian unaltered clone of Jango Fett. Stands at roughly 1.83 meters, however tall I can. I don't know the um, conversion factor. I believe he's about like a six foot tall or something along those lines. He's a very cunning individual. He's a cunning strategist. He, unlike his dad, he was he's a lot more quick-witted and cunning in terms of how what he used um, Vader's need to get a certain item against him in a fight he had with Vader. And let's put that on his feet right now. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vader for a little bit. Lost, but went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, lost without any real difficulty on Vader's part, but Vader was surprised. Now, <clears throat> he's obviously, he's a skilled marksman. He carries his, one second, I want to get the pistol right, his EE-3 carbine rifle, more powerful than the Stormtrooper's rifle. Uh, it's, it has a scope, it's got a quick-draw sling, and it's used primarily for a short, concentrated blast, but also used for a long range as well. Skills that he often carries as well a, um, well, also he has the missile on his jetpack, which his jetpack can go up to, one second, where did I have it on here? 20 second. it's got a minute, it can go a minute at a time or at most, or it can go do three 20 second bursts or 23 second bursts. And he can travel up to, uh, 100 meters within a, uh, what's it mean, 100 meters horizontally or 7 meters straight up. And Tossi's 145 kilometers. He also has a grappling hook installed in the jetpack. It's 20 meters long. Then he can move... Uh, one second. Where did I write that part down? Um, I, oh, no. Sorry. It was... it was. I thought it was the amount of speed he's doing. No, he can go a maximum of 145 kilometers an hour. Now, granted, that's within a minute's time. So... Divide an hour by 60, and that's basically how far he's going to go in that time. So, <clears throat> then we get on to his other weaponry. Now, he wears his, his helmet, is equipped with, and this there's a lot, re, re, as a re, video recorder that you can, uh, com um, sorry, again, I'm stumbling, I apologize, I'm very tired. He has a video recorder that he can use to record events and then replay them at his leisure. He has uh, light compensation, so dim light, highlight, he can just compensate for that. He's got a, uh, it can pick up on sound, it can detect sound, it's got a 360 interface in there. It can uh, relay with Slave 1 itself, his ship. And it's got, uh, I don't believe it has infrared, but it's, where's the other thing? Mm, oh, well, anyway. So, I don't believe, yeah, I don't believe it had infrared. Pretty certain it didn't have infrared in there, but... Oh no! It can um, now. I remember. It's kind of like it's kind of like an echo sense. He can actually detect individuals in like like the next room without actually being in the next room. So he's got that going for him. His armor is Mandalorian armor. He had originally a different type of armor, but it's been upgraded to Mandalorian. Mandalorian ar armor, by the by, is the stuff that actually resists lightsaber. I mean, it's not completely a hundred percent lightsaber proof. But it's damn near close to it. <laughs> so, he wears lightsaber-resistant armor. Highly lightsaber-resistant armor. Like, the most you might get is a minor scratch. That's how tough that crap is. Along with a micro-mesh energy field net uh, suit underneath there. Like a bodysuit. 
with security fields and a little a whole shebang kind of. Uh, it, it's good enough to like stop maybe like a knife uh, knife or small arms fire. Uh, now we move on to a couple other things. Now he's carried at some points. Um, he does carry a, like a survival knife as well as a where did I write the survival knife? Uh, oh, we're attracting a vibro blade. Uh, so in a dart launcher. And his knee kit pads, mind you, which can go from, you know, be electric, explosive, poison. He's got in, one second, his right wrist gauntlet. Now, let me be sure I get this right. Is it his right or his left? Uh, er, I can't be certain. But well, before we get to the list launcher, he has a concussion grenade launcher, which, you know, concussion grenades, boom, can knock you out. Or, you know, could even lead, just, just rattle your brain. Uh, flamethrower, which, uh, has three foot, um, has a one foot radius with a ten foot length to it. Wrist laser, 50, um, 50 meter range, sorry, but that's about 150 feet. Impressive. And, um, <clears throat> my, the micro darts again, yep. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, again, I really apologize. And he's, at uh, last bit, last bit I should touch on, a few things. He, uh, he's upgraded his armor. He has a collar to prevent, you know, decapitation. Uh, I can't remember the call. And he carries a couple of lightsabers on him. Now, Boba Fett has an honor code. He's not going to just go out willy-nilly and kill people. But he's also, he's not against working for the highest bidder or anything along those lines. But the reason he works for the Empire as opposed to the Rebellion is the fact that, and he said, he didn't think the Rebellion was going to last. He's, if he's going to be employed by someone long-term, he wants them to last. And, you know, they're not the ones... The millions causing chaos while the Empire has order to a level. <laughs> mm. So, that's that's why he chose that. So, he got a bit of an honor code. He's not going to just... He's not doesn't do unnecessary killing if he doesn't have to. In terms of the lightsaber, well, he's got some basic skills with it. Let's be clear. Basic skills with a lightsaber for a non-force user is basically, you're the master of all the shit. <laughs> you do not... With anyone with a lightsaber, generally speaking. Unless you, yourself, have a lightsaber. Or, in this case, Mandalorian armor. Um, that, that being said, he's uh, not invincible by any stretch of the means. He was uh, is swallowed by the Sarlacc pit. And uh, he got scarred for that. And didn't come out all the way sane after that. Uh, he's not... A, he's can be taken by surprise. In fact, when training, uh, I think, Han or Leia is one of the Han and Leia's kids. Uh, she nearly took... She would have taken off his head, honestly... By surprising her, had he not had his new neck guard, so he's not—he's nowhere near invincible. You know, he could be obliterated in an explosion or something along those lines. But that being said, he's still a tough mother. Still a tough mother. Oh, he also has another grappling hook in his uh, one of his wrist gauntlets. Moving on to Vash, you know, Mark tried to explain what Vash was like—a superhuman. That's not actually true of Vash. Now, Vash stands at five foot ten. Uh, I don't know his weight. I'm going to guess, given his size, 5'10", the way he looks, he's probably like 150, 165, maybe. He's over 181 years old. That much we know. He's not human. He's actually a plant, an interdimensional being that can gather energy from our planet. Okay. <laughs> but he, stay, he looks like he's in his mid-20s the whole time. Now... He's ha he acts foolish, uh, you know, a bright... Uh, a uh, brace of obsessive with donuts for some reason. Uh, he acts foolish, he acts careless, but it's all a ruse. He's actually more intelligent than most people on the planet. He's has he's a very serious individual uh, when he needs to be, but because of his length uh, length of life, uh, ugh, because of his lifespan, because he's seen so many people die, so many people he's cared about die, he's become very, very cold and jaded on the inside. He just hides it very well, and he hates killing. One time, he, one time I remember he had to kill was uh, he had to kill. I can't remember the character's name. But he was essentially Andrew using his telepathy to kill uh, mess with people, and he basically shot him in the head, and that fucked with him for a while. He hated killing. He hated taking of life. Now he's got superhuman. Now he's got superhuman strength, superhuman agility, reflexes, speed, all that. He's superhuman, more or less. But he he could use his powers to heal himself at any point he wants. He's covered in scars from all his battles, but he uses it as a reminder. He refuses to use his powers to heal his, heal himself. To what extent his powers actually are is not certain. All I know is he's basically a humanoid plant. 
So, oh, yeah, he can dodge, he's close enough to cl dodge close range bullets. He can, um, avoid fighting opponents. Um, if, sorry, Domino's acting up a bit. Um, he can, uh, dodge opponents using hand to hand techniques while dancing, while not making it to no one that's like, hey, I'm dodging you on purpose. Uh, he's, can stop bullets in midair with rocks. <laughs> to avoid lethal hits for people. So, that, let's be clear about it. These are bullets. These are metal. Going up against rocks, which normally, you know, a bullet's not against they're going to just outright destroy a boulder, but it's going to definitely fr fracture the boulder. These are rocks. These are pebbles. <laughs> so, it's it's a little staggering that you can actually just go boom, 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 boom. So, he's also got perfect muscle control, too, for that as well. They've even said that. He's got perfect muscle control. Now, he wields a, a custom... Colt 45 long, or excuse me, 45 caliber Colt long Colt, six shooter, customized, uh, double brake, so it means, you know, brakes like that, and then reload. That's how it basically loads. It's not, it, it doesn't, cylinder doesn't rotate, it brakes like that, and you, you reload it. Um, with, you know, 45 uh, caliber rounds. Uh, he has a cybernetic, a cybernetic machine gun arm in his left arm. Which you know this looks like this looks like the right, but it's it's the left in this case. So yeah, uh, for for the sake of the six, in this case, this is the this is the right for the left of this video. But yeah, anyway, in his left arm, <laughs> he's got a machine gun in there. I don't know the caliber of rounds that one shoots, but it shoots a uh, it, it's a it's a heavy duty weapon. Now he also has the pun. We'll we'll factor this into the equation because he, he had this for a little while. He has the Punisher, which is a cross which is a cross shaped machine gun, and or actually it's a cross shaped weapon. It houses two machine guns in the front and a rocket launcher in the back. It belonged to Wolf Blood, I believe his name is. Uh, he died and gave it to him, and Vash used it to defeat Knives, his brother. Now <clears throat> it's noted to be quite heavy. So, but we will use Vash in the sense that this is when he was carrying it. Uh, and then we go into his actual ability using the angel arm. Now, the angel arm turns basically his arm, in conjunction with his gun, he uses his gun to do this, into a super weapon, a super cannon, capable of destroying cities and blasting a hole through a moon. Yeah. He can also, but he's learned to control it to a degree where he can, you know, create defensive feathers, whatever that means, so I guess wings... And um, <clears throat> not use it to, to a sense that will uh, kill him, because uh, he uses a bit of his energy, and his hair turns a little black when they when they use up all their energy. Their hair's all black, and he will die. So <clears throat> there's only a set amount of energy apparently they have. But oh, and he can channel his uh, energy into his bullets. Uh, so he, he's learned to mask that to a degree now. That being said, not perfect. He's, I would say he's only human, but he's not only human. But he's been on the brink of death before. Not, I mean, he and his brother duked it out, and they were trying to kill him. Well, Knives are trying to kill him. And yeah, he, w he can die, obviously. He, he can die if he uses too much energy. He can die if he's just, you know, probably shot in the head, which I don't believe we've seen that. So, yeah, if that, that's Vash. So that's, that's interesting. So the way I see this breaking down is whatever the whatever the world of Trigon actually is. I don't. I know it's actually think an actual world of some kind. It's a planet of some kind. It's not Earth. I don't believe. So we'll just call it Planet Trigon. Basically, Boba Fett, hearing about this bout, he's hired to catch Tri Vash the Stampede. He goes in. What do I? What do we know about these guys? What do I know about them? Hmm. I see. So he lures them out with donuts, because he has a donut obsession, Vash. Why not? That's realistic. Vash is like, ooh. <laughs> so, and then Joe, Bill Fett maybe like spring a net. It's like, ah, oh, crap. Vash will somehow get out of the net, and then the chase begins. Now, Vash is quite fast, but... And Boba Fett is weighed down a bit by the armor, but he will try to maybe go fire a couple darts. Vash will avoid them, due to his ability to dodge, uh, you know, bullets and colorful bullets. Uh, and Vash will just continue to be on the retreat and the uh, defensive. Now, Vash may uh, lose him at one point, but Boba Fett's tracking abilities with his helmet 
will more likely locate them, and then you'll just start firing off some shots, which are lasers, which are not bullets, they're lasers. So, or blaster bolts, as we'll call, as they're usually known as. So, Vash is going to be like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, maybe even get singed up, it's like, ah oh, crap, and she then meal will fire his gun, try to get a good shot in, but the Mandalorian armor, 45 caliber or not or ammunition, <laughs> Mandalorian armor resists lightsabers. Yeah, 45 caliber bullet ain't going through that. So then, so then Boba Fett's just like, okay, time to, it's like, this is getting annoying. Tries to fire a dart. Maybe he hits him with one dart. The dart's maybe poison, so now Bash is slowing down a bit. So now Bash is like, oh crap, oh crap. Gets the, has the Punisher uh, in the location where he kept it. Gets it, and then, but and realizing that he's pretty much heavily armored, he can basically use the the weapons on the Punisher to kind of go, like, kind of try to uh, slow him down. Machine guns would definitely slow him down, especially hitting the mesh. Now, I don't believe a machine gun round is going to go through Boba Fett's mesh, but it's definitely going to make, he's probably going to feel, be like, ah, 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 what the hell, what the hell? <laughs> this, is like, ah, this is not worth my meager living, which, but by the way, I found out Boba Fett actually usually lives in very impoverished times. He doesn't have a lot of money, usually. Despite being contracted by the Empire a lot. So, this goes, ah, ah, ah. so then he probably will go for his flamethrower just to, you know, throw him off. <sighs> Bash is like, oh, crap! Crap, crap, crap! Defensive feathers at that point just, oh, crap! It's like Boba Fett sees the defensive feathers go up, decides to say, screw it. If he's got, the, if this, if he's got those defensive feathers, fires his one missile at him, his missile, blows that up. I think the feathers can probably resist the missile, though. So at that point, it's going to come down to who's going to want it more at that point? Who's going to want to get out of there more? Bash wants to get out of there more, but Boba Fett at this point is like, you know, you're not going anywhere. Gets a grappling hook, grapples Vash, basically. Tries to pull in. Vash, can't, Vash at this point, I think, would lose his gun because, you know, the grappling hook um, is, is t it's a tough cable grappling hook. This is stuff that can, you know... Uh, this is stuff that can, you know, hold Luke or even hold, like, Vader for a time. So this is strong stuff. I don't think Vash is strong enough to resist, like, a grappling cable. <laughs> so he's going to be caught, and Vash is going to do everything he can to wiggle out of there. Unfortunately, I don't think he can wiggle out of there. So this fight, I, I do think Boba Fett would... Because while I bring up a lot of, like, the lightsaber and stuff like that uh, in the canon, there's no way Vash is going to use his canon because of it's a, <sighs> Vash's character in one... Really, I, my dog is apparently doing something silly, so I'm going to finish this up quick, so I, re uh, I hope she's not destroying the living room. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, the problem with this matchup at the moment I see is that Vash, what was it that's not a hor as horrible enough person for Vash to be like, a uh, cannon? Uh, now, that being said, he could maybe, um, he could channel his energy into his bolts to give him more penetration. Now, while I still don't believe they would penetrate the Mandalorian armor, they would Definitely probably penetrate his mesh net. That er the energy he's using would definitely probably penetrate that. So, and I do, okay, first off, how I see this fight eventually ending for the majority, I think Boba Fett's going to capture Vash and just have him grappled up with a grappling hook. Because that's happened to Vash. Vash has kind of gotten in his head over his, gotten in over his head in situations like that. So I, mean, I think that's going to happen about 70% of the time. But the 30% of the time, the fight continues... Vash is actually going to incapacitate him by hitting probably like his knee, like the knees and the arms where there's no actual armor and hitting the mesh by channeling that in and hitting his, hitting particularly his joints. That will basically just throw him off and just be like, ah, and he can't get anywhere because Boba Fett can basically chase Vash down with his jetpack. The short burst, no problem. He can keep up with him. But, um, yeah, so 70% of the time, I think Boba Fett's just going to capture Vash. I don't think this is going to be a fight to the death, but this is an interesting fight, fight no, nonetheless, because it's not really a fight so much as a game of, you can't get me, you can't get me. So it's like, oh, I got you. It's like, oh. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on who wins. Again, I think Vash wins only 30% of the time on average, but it, he's not incapable of winning. He's just, it's because of that mindset of not wanting to kill people that really... It really doesn't help him with this. And then Boba Fett not killing needlessly helps keep Vash alive. But, uh, yeah. So that's my thoughts on that matchup. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review at some point. I have no other plans for today or this week for movies or 
any videos unless a certain trailer drops or something like that. Unless we get more Star Wars stuff, I'll talk about more Star Wars stuff. Uh, yeah, I went a little overboard yesterday with the Star Wars videos, but that's because a lot of freaking new information came out. I said, in fact, now that I think about it, I technically should do one more video, but I'm going to just say, screw that. It was going to be talking about Andy Serkis and Snoke, but really, it's nothing I couldn't have seen coming. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.